If you join me on the front nine, then you already know that I'm one under par headed into the back nine at Pecan Hollow. If you didn't join me on the front nine, you should go watch that to see how I'm playing. Using the par golf app, you can see the 10th hole is a short par four at 335 yards, but there's trouble everywhere, trees right and left, and the par golf app shows me that the fairway doesn't get any wider with the three wood, so it's bombs away with the driver aiming at the right hand side of the green. And that's hammered right out of the center of the club face, well executed, but with the wind blowing right to left, that ball hits the ground and squirts quite a bit through the fairway, over the cart path, into a little muddy area. Well struck, pin high left. Since my ball was on the cart path, I do get free relief, so I moved it back to have a shot. I'm sitting in this washed out muddy area that's kind of ground under repair, so the ground is really soft. You've gotta be careful not to hit it fat. You could play it like a bunker shot, but I have that tree in front of me which takes that away. So I'm actually trying to hit this a little bit thin intentionally to make sure that I don't hit the soft ground and come up short and fat. So about 40 yard chip. Rolled it up there actually really tight. That's about as good as I could have done and really executed well, making sure to hit that ball a little bit on the thin side. Leaves me a short birdie putt. These you gotta be very careful of. You wanna make them, I'm already one under par. This could build some momentum in my round early on the back nine, but the greens are fast and breaking a lot. So aim right center. Just let it trickle in just like that. Full attention, easy birdie. Moving to the 11th hole, that moves me at two under for the round heading into this 11th hole. The 11th hole is a mid-length par three, usually plays around 170 yards. In this case, the pin's on the right, just trying to feed it out there with like a seven iron in my hand. The wind's died down a little from the front nine, but it's still there. And I caught that a little on the toe, which means it's not gonna quite work its way back to the left and it comes up short. Uh, with the wind actually hurting a little bit, just didn't quite get it all the way to the hole. It actually rolled up about a foot short of the green and then rolled back down into this little collection area in the rough. So that leaves me a little 20-ish yard chip on these fast greens and you can see the wind is kind of helping. So getting the ball to stop is gonna be a challenge. Just trying to land this a few feet on the green and let it trickle up there. And that's pretty well done. I've left myself about six, seven feet for my par. Very important momentum saving putt here. Don't want to give back the birdie that I just made and this putt's gonna break. So I'm aiming outside the left edge. And that's a very good stroke. Big yeah. momentum saving putt going in the 12th hole. I love the 12th hole. I usually play this hole really well. It's somewhat short. You don't need to hit driver. If you hit driver, you can actually scoot it across the cart path with as firm as it is. And with the wind behind me, it's time to grip it and rip it. It does get narrower the further you hit it. And I just did not commit to that with the wind. Came out of it a little bit, hit it on the toe and blocked it. Uh, right over those trees towards the creek, and that is not good. I needed that to go further right to be safe. Instead, it ran through into the creek, and I have to take a penalty. In this case, I'm going back on a line with the flag to give myself a good yardage, just over 100 yards. It's a big green, and at this point, it's time to take my medicine. A quick glance at the caddy on my watch to see what Par Golf says this is playing like, and I'm good to go. All I'm looking to do is get it on the green and make sure I have a putt for par and at worst make bogey. I already made birdie on the last hole. I'm playing well, putting well. Just don't want to compound mistakes. And that's right at it, but maybe a little heavy. It does come up a little bit short and leaves myself a lengthier putt than I would have liked. So I've got somewhere in the 30 foot range here to save my par. Again, the goal here is just to nestle it up and make sure it's an easy bogey. If it goes in, that's a bonus, but let's make the bogey putt easy. Big break and putt. I need to get it started to the right side. And I don't, that's low and left. That's starting to become a trend and it was hit too hard. So the fact that I didn't read enough break and hit it that hard is not good. Left myself a solid six feet left coming back for bogey. 
So now I'm in trouble. You risk really losing some momentum if you miss this putt. It's got to break a little to the right. Start at left center. And that's well done. That's a good save. I am not mad at Bogey after hitting my tee shot into the water. The 13th hole is also a short par four. It gets narrower if you hit driver. There's water to the left. I usually am aiming at this bowl right here of rough on the right hand side. That's usually where I want to hit it. If I pull it into the fairway, that's great. But the fairway is much wider where my three wood will land versus where my driver will land. So taking a little less off the tee, trying to play smart. And that's exactly where I was trying to hit it. In retrospect, I could probably aim further left on this hole and get in the fairway but there's not a lot of risk to aim to the right. You can see that the rough is hardly there in this little bowl. So inside 100 yards, take dead aim at the flag, knock it up there and let's get a birdie putt. Par golf showing me that I hit that about 76 yards. After each shot, I quickly glance at my watch to log the club and the strike. I've got about 12 feet left here for birdie. I like to pace off all my putts so I know what to put into the app for my first putt distance. Now this is a fast downhill putt Got to be careful, breaks a little right to left. Be conscious of the speed here. Give yourself the best opportunity for it to fall in for birdie. See him lined up well outside the right edge. Ooh, and look at that thing slide. At least got the speed right, so this should be an easy tap in par. Mark that as low and left in the par golf app. I like to keep track of which direction I miss putts. That way I can go back and look and see how well I'm reading the greens. And so far I'm missing almost all of my putts low and to the left. The 14th hole is a longer par three. It plays about 190 yards. In this case, it's a little downwind, only hitting a six iron. Pins on the left-hand side, so I'm really trying to throw it out to the right-hand side and let it draw back towards the pin. Anything on the green is a great shot. It's well struck, right at it, middle of the green. Should have a nice look at birdie. All right, nice downhill fast putt again, about 21 feet. And that races by again, low and left. So hitting it with plenty of pace and still missing low and left, just not reading enough break. I gave myself that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that was, I didn't know you could do that. I give myself this one. Well, I can. <laughs> that leaves yet another six, seven foot momentum saving putt. This one's going to break to the left, aim at the left edge. It's a good save, a good par to keep myself at even par on the back, one under for the round. The 15th hole is a little bit of the longer par four, goes uphill for the second half. So you really want to get a good drive and play. There's a bunker right in the middle of the fairway. So I'm splitting the difference between the right edge of the rough and the bunker. And that's one of the few drives I was uncommitted to. Caught that on the toe, pulled it straight into the junk and left myself a tough second shot, a recovery shot. And here we are. Actually, can get a club on it. Hitting it that way. I got really lucky here with the lie. Actually, have a swing. Don't have anything behind my ball. I got kind of lucky. I actually have a swing. I found a clearing somehow. Looking all around, that is literally the best place my ball could have been. I should be able to get a club on it, advance it and have an outside shot of getting it all the way to the green. So just a 52 degree here, just a gap wedge for me. Pins on the far left hand side of the green. I'm really just trying to get it anywhere near the green to give myself a chance to get up and down. Pretty well struck. Even though the lie was as good as it could have been, you still catch some of that long grass on the way down that comes up fat and comes up short. It's even short of the bunker. It's only went about 85 yards according to Pargolf, leaving myself Kind of a tricky chip over the bunker. I do have some green to work with, pins in the back left, but again, the greens are fast and not the softest, so you've got to play for some rollout. Also, the highest lofted wedge I have in my bag is a 56, so I'm gonna have to open the face a little bit here to get this up, get it to stop quickly. A little uh, life hack for you, Robert. Just trying to get myself a putt at par. 
go upstairs with this one. Trying to go upstairs with it. Get it to stop quickly. Let the putter do the work. Saucy! And that's well done. Tap it up there, leave myself just a little two, three footer. Still want to give these your full attention, but it should be an easy par, good save. Keep the momentum, limit the damage. Even that one was sliding quite a bit, but it's in for par. The key to playing a good round of golf is just minimizing mistakes, not compounding mistakes. Just get the ball in the green. Don't try to do too much with shots like that. We move to the 16th hole. This is one of the longer par fours, but it does play downhill. The fairways are firm, so you can really blast it. So I'm aiming middle of the fairway, firing away. And with a wide fairway, that smoked. That's perfect. There is out of bounds right. That never even crosses my mind. I'm just focused on hammering it straight down the fairway and actually leaving myself just a wedge in, just about 100 yards in on this long par four. So that tee shot was hammered. According to par golf, that went 327 yards. That pin is tucked to the right, just a few paces beyond the bunker. So you do want to be careful there. Really, my target is at the pin or just left of it. Just a sand wedge left to the hole. Time to try to steal one more birdie. One more birdie and I'm two under with the chance to break 70. That's right at it. Ends up a little to the right. Good birdie look. Seven feet for birdie here. Again, I pace off all of my putts to put into par golf. That way I get an idea for my true strokes game with my wedges uh, and also lets me know how I'm putting for lag putts and short putts. Seven feet, aiming outside right, about a cup. And wow. that's low and left again. I've underread the break every time. I think early on that's because I was hitting putts too hard, so I didn't have a chance to really absorb that I was under reading them. Still, that's a hard par four and that's an easy par for me. I stay one under going into the 17th hole. My last par five of the round, my last real birdie chance to try to break 70. But the tee shot is tough. This hole, almost plays like a dog leg right because of those trees on the right hand side are so tall that you can't easily go over them uh, but you need to if you hit a draw to, to hold the fairway and that was smashed right down the middle perfect drive 290 yards leaving myself just about a hundred actually leaving myself just about 200 yards into the green into the wind so that was a long drive into the wind the wind has died down a little at this time but it's still up there So hitting a hybrid, trying to get it on the green, give myself an eagle look. I've always had a problem overdrawing my hybrids and I was aimed to the right of that pin there and still drew it back at the pin, but that's on the green. But with it being on the green, this is an eagle putt from about 36 feet. Good opportunity here. In retrospect, it never crossed my mind to make this putt. I was really just trying to lag it up and get the birdie and get the two under. Uh, that's okay, because you don't want to be careless and run it past like I have on plenty of other holes. But it really led to me being conservative trying to lag it up there. And I left myself a good six, seven feet for my birdie putt. That is not what I wanted after hitting the green in two. This is a must make if I want to break 70. And at that point, at this point in the round, that's all that's going through my head. I'm aimed well out to the left. This putt's going to break hard. And finally, I read one right, catch the right oh, edge, drops for birdie. That's a great birdie to get me to two under going to the last hole. The last hole is a bit of a nemesis for me. It does play as a dog leg right. I like to draw the ball. And realistically, to not go through the fairway, I have to aim more right than I'm comfortable with. You can see in the Par Golf app that I'm actually aiming over the corner of the creek, aiming over those trees is where I'm trying to hit it. And with the wind fighting me, that ball just does not draw back. I think it's gone. I'm confident that I just hit that in the trees and blew my chance. 
What I didn't realize was as hard as I hit that, I covered all the trees into that gap. That was a 290 yard drive into the wind. Left myself just a wedge into the green from about 130 yards. Again, just trying to get this on the green, two putt and I'll break 70. I'm playing great, just don't make a mistake. I didn't love yeah, the lie. There was, little, there was a little one of these dry ant mounds that we get in Texas around it. It was sitting a little crunchy. Probably thought about that too much and didn't give it my best strike. This is another one that landed about a foot from the green and then rolled backwards into a collection area. So close to getting it on the green, but now I've really put my 69 in jeopardy. Gonna have to get up and down, rely on the short game again. So after a couple of smash drives, my approach shots, eh, they could have been better. Just a little wedge up the hill, and that takes all the drama out of this situation. Needed a par to break 70, chipped it up to tap in distance. Short game has been sharp, putting has been sharp, and that's about as easy as 69 as you can get. I think what sticks out to me most when I look back at this round is really that you don't have to play perfect golf to shoot a good score. I don't break 70 often. I don't break par often, to be honest with you. And for this round, I really let quite a few opportunities go. I don't feel like I just was flushing it and, and playing great. Obviously, I had four birdies. I had two bogeys. Uh, so I did minimize mistakes. So as a low handicap golfer, or any golfer really, what really jumps out to me is you don't have to play perfect golf to play well. You have to be patient. You have to make good decisions. Sometimes you have to rely on your short game. But by not compounding mistakes, I shot a pretty easy 69 on a golf course I'm comfortable with. But still, that's a great score. And it really just jumps out to me that I didn't have to play perfect. There were lots of squirrely shots in there. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll go through all the stats from Par Golf and really analyze the round in detail. As always, please like, subscribe, stay tuned to the channel, download the Par Golf app, and let's play better golf together.